Time. Still well, time. They still got a lot to have, prove, though. Arrogance over. time. All right. Joining us up here. Uh, thank you so much. Congratulations, first of all, man. Jeez, man. Thank you there for you joining us up here. Um, your ninth major Hello. playoff, I believe, Mr. Carrigan. Does, does the feeling ever get old, or are you still as excited to be entering the arena? I feel it's uh, about time. I think it's uh, <laughs> since 2018, when I got uh, when I was an in in-game leading and faced at London. That's last time I made playoffs. So True. Yeah. Mm. Obviously, being back here, um, I was really close with Mouse, so so it's good to be back in playoff. Yeah, congratulations on, on the best of three. Uh, I had a question in my mind. You came into this major and a lot of people put you guys as the favorite. A lot of people say this is your major to win. Can you give me a few words as how you are handling it? How's the team handling this situation? It, it's quite unique to be in there. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, being favorites to win a major is always tough, right? Whatever game you play, if you don't win, it's kind of um, not good enough. I would say if you play now and we lose that game, people will kind of understand that, right? But um, obviously, coming to this major, what I've tried to do is just like what we're gonna do to win the ma major is ma making history. So trying to break down the pressure, right? If mm. what we're gonna do and what we favorite to do is gonna make history, then it's fine. And I just try to acknowledge that pressure comes with uh, people have expectations because we're doing good. So it's so just trying to break it down and don't think about doing the game. And the first goal was to make playoff. And I feel like yeah. when you go into playoff, it's it's just a different game than a group stage now. You play best of three, elimination, uh, go home or go further, right? You almost feel like the, the hardest part is behind you now. You've gone to the playoff and this is where you shine with the team. Yeah, I mean, from now on, I mean, if, if you meet a really great team who plays a great game and you lose in quarterfinal, there is no shame in that. I think this was the first step and, and we are ready. And, and right now it's three games away from, from winning uh, the tournament. Um, but yeah, treating the tournament as like we have done with Katowice and Pro League. I think that's the main thing for us. Just try to not to think about what, what it means to win a major because it is, like I said, international team winning a major is history. All right. I just had just one question coming into this very specific game. I had you extremely favorite on Inferno. Honestly, I, I put my money in there. I said, you know, FaZe, they know what they got to do. It's going to be easy. Were you surprised by what they threw at you? What Do you think it's on your end that things went a little bit south? How, how did you guys explain that situation in the first map? Yeah, I mean, I didn't have so much info on the Inferno, but it's a map I'm fine to play. Just our defaults, have it all execute and stuff like that. So I kind of knew what's going to happen, but I felt like everything was wrong. The initiative wasn't there, the trading was not on point at all, and the individual players didn't really get the duels, right? When, when I was dead, I looked left and right, everybody just dying in the duels. So yeah, I think it was one of those like early games. So so far we lost an early map and, and we lost the early game against Ents, right? So um, I think now we're coming into playing at 4 p.m. and that's like a <laughs> game of time for, for our team. Like they, they grind a lot in the night and I think um, coming on to the next match, we are more awake, I think. So it's more like when you lost in frame, we're like, okay, this is going to be two tough maps. Um, but in the end, it's two maps we've never lost with Rubs, right? So coming into to the last two maps, I had a really good feeling. How about when you guys had the, the Ents game? So for that one, for example, it also felt like you guys started kind of slowly into that. Uh, what, what do you think you can do to make sure that everybody comes in hot? Because, I, yeah, I think we definitely saw that here on map one, number one and then in that game too. Yeah, I think, I, I think it comes down to having a little late schedule and, and that's like part of being a pro gamer. It's always hard to tell people to go better at 12 when they like to <laughs> sure, sure. play late, right? So I'm yeah. trying to have a good structure for myself and, and trying to be on point. So at least I'm there mentally and trying to support the guys. But yeah, I have to wait and see if it happens, keep on happening the next uh, few months that we just lose the game that's uh, like 11 a.m. Or, or at 12, right? Then we need to figure out because it's not really worth it, right? But right. Um, in the end, uh, the t last two matches are going to be played played pretty late. So yeah. let's see if the boys are shining now. <laughs> okay. Uh, another thing is coming into this event, I mean, you guys took down Katowice, took down Pro League. There's clearly a target on your back. Do you think that people are prepping for you more specifically than they were earlier? I think at this point, people are going to punch and, and try to find find out a, a solution with our map pool. When you look at our stats, yeah. there's not many places you can go, right? And, and today we played an Ancient and a Nuke team that's really good and beat mm -hmm. different uh, top teams. And, and like we're coming on top of that and having 100% win rate on Ancient and having like close to 90% on Nuke. And in my opinion, Inferno is, might be our best map, but um, it is hard to, to keep winning on that map. But um, right now, people have to figure out what is our worst map, and, and right now I, I feel good on every map, basically. Okay, I also have one more question about just kind of how you guys sometimes play out mid-round situations. I would attribute, I'd say, some of what happened on Inferno, but more so what happened in the loss to Ents to sometimes individual peaks and things like that where you guys aren't really playing perfect CS, but you're playing still strong CS that 
emphasizes your individual ability. But when it's not clicking, and and we saw that it could happen, uh, what's the fallback plan? Yeah, I think I think you saw at the end of the game here we tried to do some fast execute and getting that trading potential, and I think. Um, it was hard to figure out exactly where it was wrong because, yeah, you can go trade, but if you don't get the trade because you're not winning your duel, mm -hmm. then what do you do? There's no really full back plan, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so I felt like we tried kind of everything on Inferno, tried to play our default, tried to take banana, and then tried to fake banana, explode A. But every time we came up somewhere, the trade was not on point. And, and if you just hesitate 2-3% against any good team, that's the 2% where, where the rotation already in or the flash is coming and mm -hmm. the guy re-peaks, right? So yeah, in my opinion, it came down to just like not fully there yet, uh, and maybe um, yeah, maybe a little nervous in the beginning uh, because maybe we feel like we have to win that game. But but yeah, I think we they p kind of pissed us off after that inferno game, and, <laughs> and then we went into it like to it. show that um, especially on nuke, right? The way we played, it was uh, that's the way I love when Face is playing. It's disrespect and going for the flashes, and but we played together, and and, and I think it was a great game overall. Okay. To ask more specifically about Ancient uh, as well, of course, you allude to the 100% success rate on that uh, in terms of your recent matches and specifically with ROPS as well. We've seen you be really dominant on those CT sides, but it hasn't really allowed us to see too much of the T sides for, for you guys. So how comfortable are you feeling on those T sides, maybe compared to the CT side of Ancient? Yeah, I think from the from the practice we have had, uh, obviously, this is the first time where we have to play a longer T side. And, and like the way they play is very different compared to other teams. I feel like I had a good game plan, but again, uh, sometimes there's a little misunderstanding that did we couldn't react in, in time and I also think we felt some nades here and there which is really tough on T-side Ancient and, and losing the anti-echo and, and it starts like that. So yeah, I feel like we didn't show everything we have on Ancient but obviously we showed some of the tricks we, we had and, and Coming in Flames is a really good Ancient team and they handle it pretty good so yeah, I think I learned something today from, from what we didn't experience in practice and, and we can improve on that for, for, the, for the next stage. Yeah, hopefully we're going to get to see more of Ancient going forward. We're definitely going to get to see more of you, Karagun. Congratulations to yourself and Face on making it to the playoffs. We're going to be throwing it to a break. But after that,